Hydraulic cylinders run the entire world, except this one. This one doesn't run anything because it's extremely broken, except it's not broken in the way you think it is. It's broken in a slightly different way. This is called the end gland and it goes into the end of the cylinder. You can see some damage and we're going to get to that. But this is why the cylinder is broken. This groove totally messed up and it has something to do with this internal snap ring that actually holds the entire cylinder together. This ring right here, it's under compression when it's in and there's a great snap coming up. I'm going to let you hear it. Nice. Now, honestly, without more props and more film and stuff, I can't really explain exactly how this works, but I'm not really making a video to, to show you how this works. I'm showing you how I fixed it. So here's the actual problem. What we need in a good cylinder is a ramp in and a 90 degree shoulder against it for that ring to sit in. This stops it from coming out and exploding. What we have on this cylinder that we're working on is that ramp in and then a ramp out, and that's bad. Now, no need to stress, because I have the fix for it. You can buy one of these cylinders right off the shelf, ready to go. I'm gonna have this guy back on the road in no time. The only problem is there is some assembly required, and that's exactly what this video is about. So this is the rebarreling of a hydraulic cylinder. And in case you're wondering, this came off of a big John Deere excavator. And in case you're wondering why we're fixing it, instead of replacing it, it's because this is a $10,000 spend to replace the cylinder. And I think that's totally ridiculous, but also somehow fits perfectly with what I know about John Deere. We're cutting a piece of this ring off, that's gonna be useful later. And now we just gotta cut this thing in half, which is gonna make it a lot easier to manage in the lathe. First job at the lathe is putting a center drill into the end. That's going to let me put a live center in the end, which is going to let me put a lot more pressure into this part because digging out the weld, which is what we're going to do right now with this button head insert, puts a lot of pressure on this part. Just remember, this is all sped up. It just seemed boring otherwise, but this is actually the speed that I'm running this at. What we're looking for here is a seam where these parts are actually joined and that'll mean we're totally through the weld. You're going to see it coming up right here. Perfect. So the mount end of the cylinder is now in my hands, ready to adapt to its new home. First we're going to have to make a little plug and this is going to go in the back of the cylinder and it's going to hold it perfectly parallel in the lathe because this tube's really heavy. And this is just a little hack on getting the steady rest set up quick. So the first task with this thing all set up in the lathe is facing the first end. Now I'm putting a chamfer into the end, big bevel. And this is going to be the weld prep, and that's going to let us get a really, really high penetration weld in there. It's going to be very strong. It's looking good. All right, now that it's flipped around in the lathe, all I got to do is take it to its final dimensions, which... Of course I remember to take before we cut this tube in half. This is a lead-in I'm machining on the inside, and that's going to let the end gland slide right inside very nicely. But now it is time to pucker. Now is time to put the most important feature of this tube back inside of it. And it's that groove that that snap ring snaps into.
This first part of the groove is actually just getting the, the actual dimensions I want for that ring. And I kind of fumbled a little bit trying to get the exact correct dimensions. Showing you a couple different ways I tried to measure it out, but I got it. But unfortunately, somebody forgot to make a video of me machining the lead in on this thing. So you'll just have to imagine how awesome it was, which was incredibly awesome. But I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a nice 90 degree shoulder on the back side. That's the best view I can give you. And uh, as far as best advice I could give you is don't put the end gland into the cylinder or it will be stuck for over 30 minutes. We are officially done in the lathe and heading over to the mill. That ain't going nowhere. I've got a little tool called an edge finder in the mill right now, and that's just getting the exact dead center of this cylinder. And with that done, we're ready to install a 5 8 hole. All right, most of the machining is done now. I'm just gonna do some well prep and we're getting ready to glue this whole thing back together. And off camera, I cleaned up this fitting a little bit. It's looking pretty nice. That's ready to go. And it looks okay. Not bad for a machinist, I guess. Here's my little welding contraption. Half lathe, half positioner, very nice. And uh, just getting this thing set up and we're gonna burn this in with about four or five passes. Now, sometimes I'm being funny when I don't have the correct PPE on, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that it was extremely dumb to weld this without a jacket on. I don't know what I was thinking. If I could have talked to, to past John about that, I would have said something. Nice. That ain't going nowhere. All right, well that's cooling. I wanna go ahead and fix this end gland that goes into the opposite end of the cylinder. It got damaged when this thing blew up, so just getting it all straight in the lathe, all concentric. And I'm going to bring some tools in, and we're just going to give it a little kiss. We're not cutting material past just where it's pushed out. And that's all she's going to need to be right as rain again. All right, the cylinder is cool enough to touch now. And you remember that fitting we put in the end? Well, I wanted to make sure that there was no warpage or anything funny that I couldn't see with my eyes. So I took it to my friend Matt. He's got a precision hone and he just took a lick out of there for me and made sure everything was absolutely perfect inside. Look at that, delicious. Now, what's the next thing we do? The inside looks sexy. We gotta make the outside look just as sexy. So popping some caps in here, and we're gonna give it a paint job. For continuity's sake, I should probably mention that this isn't for an individual customer where I would be rebuilding this entire cylinder for them. This is actually for another shop in town. And it's my friend Pat's shop. He uses me to manufacture these tough parts 
and he does the rest of the work. We are truly in the home stretch here. Time to step back and look at our work. Looking like a piece of jewelry, I absolutely love it. How's the inside look? Absolutely fantastic. Well, this is it, running. It's a little bit later, so it's dirty. I had a ton of fun doing this, and I hope you had fun watching. I'll see you on the next one.